Well, hey, Billings, how's it going tonight? It's so good to be here. <laughs> such an honor to be here tonight. Um, you know, let me just say that was such a great honor for me. Um, I grew up across the river from the Blackfeet Reservation, and um, my my childhood friends were Blackfeet and Little Shell kids. And you know, throughout that whole course of that, I really adopted a lot of Native American philosophies into my core beliefs. You know, I think that we really need to learn a lot from <clears throat> from our our Native American friends. And uh, lessons like honoring Mother Earth and all of her inhabitants. And to never question another person's spiritual walk. And I think the one that's probably the most apropos right now is to honor not the person who accumulates the most wealth, but the one who contributes the most, who is the most generous. You know, through this whole process, uh, we've, uh, when we started, well, let me tell you, first of all, people asked me, they said, why in the world would you want to get into the down and dirty world of politics? And I'm learning how down and dirty it is. Is anybody else sick of seeing my face on TV? You know, anybody see the debate? Um, of course, my opponent, he was kind of rattling off these false claims about, uh, you know, he's for sanctuary cities, he wants a national gun registry, he's, he's in bed with Nancy Pelosi. Well, I think I would have remembered that. <laughs> it's a say anything kind of thing, but you know, um, through it all, I've just maintained that I, my philosophy is that if you take the high road, you never get stuck in the mud. And let's just talk about who is coming out, you know, uh, who is coming out and spending $5 million in these attack ads and who is also, you know, bringing out a lot of the special interest groups, you know, from Washington, D.C. I have run my campaign as a strong and independent voice for the people of Montana. We have received, uh, through contributions, we have received over 200,000 separate contributions at an average of $25 per contribution. That's what a grassroots campaign looks like. You know, uh, I think probably one of the main reasons I got into this was because my concern for public lands. You know, I realized that there are forces in this country. I mean, why do you think they're spending that much money to silence my voice and the voices of the people of Montana? They have ill designs on our beloved state of Montana. I am not kidding. This is a fight for the soul of Montana. It truly is. People like Gianforte, when they see our mountains and our streams, they probably think, well, that would be great to own and fence in and develop but real montanans would say this is our way of life you know hiking up in the baratus or fishing the yellowstone chief seattle said we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors we borrow it from our children There could be no greater truth in regard to this beautiful landscape that we live in. And the transfer and eventual sale of our public lands is nothing more than theft against our children and our grandchildren. I promise you, I will steadfastly defend it. You know, my opponent, he, uh, he spent $5 million you know, running for the governor. Thank the Lord that that didn't happen. <clears throat> and now he's trying to buy this election too, as you know. This house seat should not be his consolation prize. You know, 
I think that public lands was probably the number one issue, but we have seen that change in the last two weeks with the, with the passage from the House from this, what I call the Un-American Health Care Act. Because, you know, first of all, who thinks that, uh, that we have to, well, he also came out, you know, with that New York t uh, Times uh, uh, release that, uh, that he was thankful for the, the passage of this, this, uh, pa this health care bill. Yeah, thankful that 70,000 Montanans would be kicked off of health insurance. Thankful that 24 million Americans world, uh, nationwide would be kicked off. And then also that we'd bring out back the whole concept of pre-existing -exist conditions. I mean, half of all Montanans have pre-existing conditions. How many people of you right here would have pre-existing conditions? See, there is the proof right there. And then, you know, really, this isn't a health care bill. This is nothing more than a tax break for not only multimillionaires, but special tax breaks for insurance company executives. This one is a disaster, and we have to, we have to resist this one at all costs. You know, my own health care, um, my own health care issues have been well documented, wouldn't you say? <laughs> but you know, the thing is, we've been doing health care rallies across the state, and we've heard story after story of people who have the same situation as I do. And, you know, the thing is, to my mind, you know, in the greatest country on earth, people should not have to go bankrupt due to health, insur health issues. People should not have to go bankrupt. And let's talk about women's issues. We all need to resist the assault on women's reproductive rights. These are more than just women's issues. These are family issues and community issues and human issues. And I promise you that I will, I will always support access to birth control and to preventative screenings. I will oppose any effort to, to uh, underfund Planned Parenthood. Politicians like Greg Gianforte have no business getting into the, the difference between the decision that is between a woman and her faith and her doctor. I support a woman's right to choose. Um, you know, I think in the debate the other night that the, uh, there was a question about Montana values. And I think if you have to ask what Montana values are, maybe you haven't been in the state quite long enough. But uh, let me just tell you what I think they are. You know, Montana is a land of untold beauty, but a country that can be unforgiving for those who are not hardy and resourceful. But <clears throat> we could not be more diverse with our Indian tribes that have been here for countless generations and you know, immigrants from every corner of the world. But we have found through all this diversity that we have our strength in our unity. We're neighbors to each other and we rely on each other. And when we have differences, we counsel together with respect to work out these differences. And we realize that we exclude no one regardless of race or religion gender, orientation, or ethnic origin. We know that life under the big sky has to work for everyone or it doesn't work for anyone. You know, I just want to give a, a shout out to my staff. I'm so proud of the people that, that are working with me on this campaign. They have been so amazing. And I realize that the reason I have such a great staff is that there are no other elections going on in the country right now. <laughs> <laughs> but they, these people are committed and they care. They deeply care. And the people that are stepping forward to volunteer, we have about 2,000 people now across the state that are working so hard to bring this home. And so I just want you to give them all just a, a little round of applause right now.
And I'm asking for your vote. I'm asking for your vote, Montana. And I know that uh, I'm also asking you to help us get out this vote. You know, you need to talk to people. You need to, each one of you need to talk to two or three people and get them to the polls. We are so close to winning this. I think that we are about on the verge of making a big, a big splash that is going to be heard nationwide. You know, before I go, I'd just like to share a poem with you. Uh, John Tester has been campaigning for me, and he said, Rob, when you speak to Billings tonight, um, would you uh, recite that poem that you wrote? And so I'd like to recite it for you now. Montana. She's been called a lady when we sing her praise. And if you fail to see the logic, well then, let me count the ways. Her serious hair is red and gold at evening sunset's light. And I've always thought her mountains looked especially good in white. Her gown is luscious green when she attends the annual springtime ball. And she fancies orange and gold at harvest moon in the fall. Her wild and natural beauty, it will take away your breath. Oh, but just take her for granted. It could easily mean your death. She's slow to grant her favors to come lately, newer faces. To longtime suitors, she reveals her hidden, secret places. She lives in big time splendor. She's the heart of the Golden West, and all manner of wondrous creatures live and suckle at her breast. And yes, there will be those who come with schemes of ways to use her, to sell her body like a harlot, to cheapen and abuse her. If you've sworn your love for her, revere, respect her. If you're a man of honor, you must cherish and protect her. And should we fail in this task, we'll lose this living treasure. Should we prevail, this lady that we love will live forever. Listen, I'm counting on you, Yellowstone County. I'm counting on you big time. This is the largest voting block in the state. And you know, I tell you what, if, you, if we can bring this home, it goes a long way toward winning this election. So I'm just really counting all of you to, to help us carry this out. And when you cannot stand, I'll stand for you. And when you feel like your voices are being drowned out by critics and bullies, I'll stand behind this microphone to make your voices heard. Stand with me, Montana, and I'll stand up for you.